Welcome to the new Omni Garage facility. So it's a bit of a mess behind me here. We've basically got all of our Omni Garage supplies, all of our car detailing supplies, pretty much everything we've been building up over the last couple of years sitting behind us here in a really messy, unorganized fashion. So obviously this is our new facility. It's messy there, messy there, messy there. We've got a couple of snippets of this room that are set up nicely, like the essentials, the TV, the Sonos on the wall so we can enjoy being in the room here. Ignore all of this, this should be out of here shortly once we get this room set up and essentially all we're going to be left with in here for our car detailing will be the TV and the Sonos to give us something to do, something to listen to while we're detailing. And the only other thing that will remain in this room will be basically the contents that you see over this side here. So we've already got our made of tomorrow shelves up on the wall, these are 1.2 metres long, so very similar to what we've had in one of the previous setups uh, in the garage. We've just gone with the longer shelves that have a nice lip on them as well so your bottles don't fall off this way. And they've got a protectant behind them as well so that steel goes all the way up so you're not banging your bottles against the wall. So that was project two, getting those up on the uh, the wall after getting the TV and the Sonos all set up. And then we've got basically everything left on the floor here that we need to get dealt with. We've got our Yeti buckets in the corner and um, we've got all of our detailing towels miscellaneous, miscellaneous, ego blower, gallons, bottles, old grit guards, towels, polishes. We've got a lot of Ryobi stuff as well. What we're gonna try and do here today, we've started with one of these metal cabinets. So in New Zealand, we don't have a huge, um, I guess a huge selection of cabinets that we can buy and getting them from overseas with a shipping cost is, um, is near and impossible if you can get them at all. So what we've got, this is a pinnacle cabinet that we picked up from Bunnings. It's 1.8 metres high, we've got a 2.7 ceiling in here so we're still going to have a metre left on top of this. Um, the depth is going to sit really nicely behind the void that we've got on the wall here before we impact on cars driving in with that garage door. And 860 wide, so I'm, I'm unsure whether one of these will be enough or whether we're going to need two of these in the garage. So what we're going to do is get this all set up and then have a bit of fun setting up all our detailing products in there and just organizing, rejigging, and then working out if we need to go back to Bunnings and buy a second one. So we'll crack on, get this put together, and then we'll kind of show you our, uh, our finished setup and, and a few bits and pieces along the way. I think the most exciting bit about this is uh, the lack of hardware here. Compared to the uh, Duratuff shed we put together recently, there is not a lot that we need to, uh, to put in there. And, um, We've only got three pages worth of instructions. It's exciting. All right, we've got both doors on. Here we go, we're all made up. So, pretty happy with that. Quality is not too bad, it's relatively sturdy once you get it put together. The hardware probably, I didn't think it was quite up to spec, or up to standard, and the only little blemish we got is on the right hand side here, but that's all gonna be tucked up against the, uh, tucked up close to the wall anyway, so one, two, three. Glad those are not in the front. We'll push it back and we'll uh, get some of our products in there. Alrighty, so we've got a power strip up in the top here so we can run all of our power, all our charges inside here. So that means we'll be able to take things like our, uh, our Ryobi chargers, our Ego chargers, things like our Rupes when we eventually end up with wireless tools. And we'll be able to store these right on the top here. We will get some cable ties and make this look really nice, but they can go on the top. We're good to go, charging in the cabinet. Just needs a bit of a clean up, but I'll put it in here for all uh, intents and purposes. Oh yeah, that looks real nice. We got gallons on gallons. These turned up today. We got bead maker, brake buster. So these are our Omni Garage supplies. So thinking about this, to be honest, we probably do want to. Uh, you, you're going to get your way. They can go on the uh, the bottom shelf because we can stack gallons too deep in here. Yeah. And then we've got uh, retire MFX, which is our current towel wash of choice. I don't think these ones will stack too like this, but these ones will they stack three? No, they won't. Not so, three deep? I 
think the amount of gallons we have right now, to be honest though, we may be able to get away. So we've got Spotless 2.0 there. That's a fantastic product. Check out the video on that. That's our gallons. So what we could do, make this really easy, is we could have, so what have we got there, descale, retire. So we Does go, it not fit three wide, flipping them around to the labels or forwards? Like this. As in like this. You do that. And can you flip the other ones around? The Can you get two that way? Easily. Yeah, you can. So we could have our gallons like that. And then we've got our live products that we're using at the moment. So we probably want those. They're separate to the ones we've got up on the shelf here. So this is essentially, well, this is a bit of a mix right now of the Omni Garage supplies and my personal supplies. You've got the same at your place. And then we've got what we're going to fill up here to use for our customer so cars. So ideally what we want is we want all the customers that come to Omni Garage to get their cars dialed in, all that stuff's going to stay in the cabinet, essentially. Yep. And that's just so that we can keep count of inventory and price it all out, etc. And then Glenn's personal collection of stuff is going to go up on the um, Made of Tomorrow shelves. Yeah, and then I'll probably have um, some gallon overflow in here or yeah. pick up another cabinet and I can store some of that stuff in there because I've got quite a few gallons sitting in here as well. So the other thing that we've got is um, obviously we've got the correlating bottle. So we want to make sure right now it's really easy where we go to for it. So we've got the likes of uh, D-Scale. So a couple of ways we could do this, man. You, you tell me. We could have all of these flipped the way that we had it. So we could have it like this. So we've got a gallon and then the bottle that we've got on the go at the moment. Yeah. Or we could just have all the bottles of all the stuff on the go just scattered over here. It's interesting how people go to different parts of their brain for organisation, eh? So you're kind of like the guy who likes to have the gallon with the matching bottle in front of it? Well, yeah, that, that to me kind of makes sense because it's like, oh yeah, I need to refill that, that's there. Whereas I'm the kind of guy who's got all the nice gallons on one shelf yep. lined up and then I like all the bottles on the next shelf correlating so below. You have, you have a bottle shelf and a gallon shelf. Yeah. But this is at your place, so you do what you like, man. Uh, yeah, I've got well, mine. I've got mine set up at home. Heaps of people have seen it lots of times, where I've got gallons along one shelf, yeah. and I kind of don't have enough room for them all, but I do have them correlating closely. But you, you, so, you. So what you. are we? Um, what are we going to do when we have the, uh, the the proper facility one day? Who who's going to win on that one? Like, what are we going to have? I don't know. We'll have bigger problems at that point, won't we? Bigger problems. You you because this is this, this is an idea. Okay? That's so what we, you would do. We could, well, this is not necessarily what I do. This is a. Uh, this is an idea. Oh no. You have to look at this every day, I don't. I do, I do. I, oh, do I have to look at it every day? I don't have to. <laughs> no, I see this this confuses me, right? Because then then we have the issue of we don't have gallons for every product yet. So some of these we do, some of that works. But also what I don't like, so here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What I don't like is that now you see, so to me gallons should be overflow storage that are kind of put out of the way a little mm -hmm. bit and not necessarily easily accessible because you're not really filling those gallons up uh, you're not filling up from the gallon that often no so i think your products that you're using should be readily available they should go on like mid shelf or something like that taller one so i don't but you know and pull, then those should stay down there for storage but pull some of these bottles yeah look i i, I i'm on the i'm on the fence here i'm very much on put the this fence. in the comments how are you going to organize it so if you if you had this similar debate how are you going to organize your shelf put it in the comments i reckon these are real first world problems aren't they i tell you i love these gallons of um i love these car pro gallons like what i, I really like about like them the is bottle. that when you unscrew them for the very first time they unscrew real nicely so yeah. unscrew one and see how they're all sealed so a lot of like um the pns products right you unscrew those for the first time they've got it's that, got that little peel off paper that little tip. paper tip and that is a frustrating to get off so i like yeah. car pro they have that or actually i have got some other products that you unscrew the cap and then inside it is a um a little plastic stopper type yes. thing and you just pull the little plug out i also quite like that idea as well so the other thing we've got here is we've got a lot of polishing stuff so this is kind of the challenge that we've got right now so i've got gallons as well look at all, look at all the brake buster we've got <laughs> gallons on gallons here so i've got gallons Personal ones. Eventually, everything should just be all just on the garage, right? We just, you need to brake buster, we'll grab some brake buster. So we've got all of these extra gallons. Or should you put the polishers on the bottom, bottom shelf? Gallons on the second shelf, and then the matching corresponding bottles on the next shelf up. 
We could do because this is the uh, this is the other thing. So this is a um, you got a pad shelf here. This is this is a donation. This is almost a. It's funny because it's not really a donation, right? Omni Garage is you and me. We decided that it, it's a little bit, the pads that we had that are slightly used or a bit. We just donate to the. We're going to donate, all right? So we're going to have all our pad storage. So we've, we've got this to deal with as well. We've got pads. <laughs> Pads on pads on pads. I think you need to go buy yourself another shelf. And in that shelf you have polishing pads, polishing machines and towels. Yeah. So you put the polishers on the bottom, towels and then pads on the top. And you keep this for hard storage. <sighs> yeah, because I don't think we're going to fit everything. Because what about there, tools? We? Real tools and all that sort of stuff's going to go. Well, what kind of tools? So Cheap. you got you got uh, like a the Rupees buttering knife. Oh yeah, and I know. A couple we, of need, lights, we need some separate storage. And then we've got here. our... Um, our coating stuff, so you know our coating blocks and all that sort of stuff. The other thing we've got is all of these. All the polishing stuff. All the actual polishers. So, so I they should go on a shelf with uh, polishing. No, well they should, yeah, well they should go on with your gallons. Uh, with your spare bottles. How many different ways could we sort this? There's a few, right? Okay, as you can see behind us, we're pretty much all set up and we've at least got it in a makeshift way. We'll kind of work out our process over the next little while as to how this works and we'll make a few changes to it. But Here's the, uh, here's the main event here. We've managed to pretty much get everything that we wanted in here. Obviously sands, the microfiber towels, and a few other little accessories. Polishes sitting on top up there, but um, overall kind of the, the setup we went with here, we debated back and forward about this, and I think what we settled on is, um, is probably a, a pretty good compromise in the middle. We really need two of these. If we had two, we wouldn't have had to make any compromises at all around what went in the cabinets and what wasn't able to fit in here, but what we've got on the top is our charging setup. So we use this Ryobi vacuum all the time. It's not the greatest one in the world, but it is the one that we're using at the moment. I know Ryobi do have a few new ones coming out soon, so we're excited to try those, so potentially that may end up being swapped out. But we've got our Ryobi Ego charger at the top there, and eventually that'll probably get kicked out to make way for some Rupees chargers. So we want the uh, the hybrid nano. Um, there's also the new three inch machine as well. So I can probably see in the future that some of those get swapped out. And yeah, we struggled on this shelf, didn't we? Well, really these, these next two. Yeah, so it gets quite confusing, right? It's like, is this a shelf where we want to be like using as a bit of a backdrop? Do we want to film in front of, talk you through products and stuff like that, show off what we've got, where we're developing and where we're heading? And that's what we've kind of come up with that this is a bit of a showpiece. Also, we also want to have a little bit of function here. So that shelf there, I mean, we don't polish all day, every day, seven days a week, but we do do a decent amount of polishing also with our coating and stuff as well on that top shelf. And there's also a few bits of tools that we use quite regularly. So that's how we've sort of laid out that next shelf. Yeah, we kind of went with all of our pads on the left. We've got some accessories on the right and then obviously some coating related stuff on the back and on the right hand side. Then we come down a shelf, we've got all of our coatings in here, so we've actually got a few at the moment. We've got double up of CSL XOV4, we've got a couple of bottles of Deluxe in there, and some other various coatings. All our polishes, pretty much this section here is the, um, the different compounds and, and polishes we're using at the moment. And then this side here needs to be organised a bit, but essentially this is all of the bottles that we're using whenever we've got a customer car that comes in. So this will expand, likewise the shelf below it. Mm. These are all our refills of the bottles we've got at the top. So, And we use Bee Maker Brake Buster, and there's some soaps in the back there. We use those probably the most regular Yeah, we've got D scale the back there. And we're also missing a few products, you know, interior cleaner, et cetera, from the customer side of you that we haven't got. There is interior cleaners up on that side, which is Glenn's personal collection up yeah. there. So, I mean, eventually we'll probably have these two. We'd have a razor as well, GSF. These would become part of like this setup in here as well. But right now we're kind of working with a couple. We're of just basically setups. building out our inventory as we develop and as we get more and more customers and as we do this more and more often. Yeah, well I mean a few of these gallons turned up today, right? Spotless 2.0 turned mm -hmm. up today. We had a bead maker gallon and a brake buster at the back there. Those all turned up today. So these are all our refills for this shelf. And then the bottom shelf is all of the refills for what is on display out here at the moment. So we've got more brake buster, brake buster, bead maker, whole range of CarPro products. We've got tar, we've got a razor. I think we've got an inner QD and then just a, a various range of other smaller bottles and more coating at the bottom too. So essentially the way that we look at it is bottom shelf is for the shelf out here. We've got Omni Garage gallons, Omni Garage working product, all of the polishing, all of the ceramic and then the charging vacuum shelf. And then uh, on top there, 
the uh, the key to the key to it all really. We've got the two rupees machines. We've got the uh, LHR 15 Mark III, and then we've also got the uh, the 75E. And hopefully, I mean, there's there's no new replacement machine to that yet. And I mean, this hasn't necessarily been replaced, the smaller one, but it is a uh, an hybrid tool now as well. So I'm super excited to get those into our collection. And then we move this way. Heaps of rag company towels, all sorts of different ones in here. I love these the gauntlet mini. We've got a bunch of glass towels, interior, used to use these. This is like the new staple for us. These are the old bead makers we used to use, some wheel towels, and we've got just a whole bunch. I think we've got some ceramic coating removal towels there. The big size gauntlet towel as well. Really, really handy for drying non-ceramic coated cars. And then the Yeti bucket setup. So we've got three Yeti buckets. We, we want to change the setup at some point, not the actual buckets, but we want to get some, uh, some bucket some, dollies. Some dollies and get some really nice labeling on the front of there. You know, like a, a wash, a, uh, a rinse and a wheel label on there. Yeah, just so we can differentiate the buckets. And to be honest, I think my buckets are getting close to retirement. That might be turned into uh, maybe mopping duty at some point soon. I think when we get the vinyl, we get the bucket dollies, it's probably time for a, uh, a wee little bucket upgrade. You've already got three sitting in your- I got uh, three sitting in the spare room, which is just all looking real nice. It is. And then we've got the made of tomorrow shelves set up on the top. So what we're wanting to do here as well, these are, as we said, all of the products that are getting topped up from the bottom shelf in here. These are kind of the personal collection that I've got on the go. Um, and what we're wanting to do here though is find a bottle that every product can go into, get our own labels on here to match what we've got on here, and then also match that with gallons as well. So this is very much a work in progress. There's a few products to add to here, um, but I'm really excited. This is, this is kind of what it's all about for me, is coming in here and lining up the bottles, playing around with them. Um, I can't wait till they all look the same. I'll be able to fit it around less with them. Oh, the Karcher, yeah, yeah, can't forget. We've got the Karcher tucked down the side. That's powered up. So essentially what we need to do to get this going, water in, flick it on, little little dribble there, and we're good to go. We can start washing, bring the buckets out, which will be so much easier when they're on dollies as well. So the whole idea with this setup is, um, is function. We want it to function really easily. We don't want it to be a, a nightmare to try and get things put together. Um, and we may we may add another one of these at some point, but we are working with the, uh, the fuse box here and then also the uh, the main water shut off to the house as well. So try not to cover those up if we don't have to. We could always cut some holes in the back of here, but we'll work with this for a while. We'll see how it goes and I'm really excited. We've actually got a Range Rover coming next week. So that'll be the first vehicle that we get to work on utilizing this setup and, and I'm excited. We'll... And also what's also really key here is that this isn't the ultimate setup. This is like pretty good yeah these are the products that we've tried and tested and this is going to develop as we develop as well so these products will change in and out we might come back to some old favorites we might flag a couple and yeah. um you know and we'll get more and more stuff and um so this is kind of like a i suppose a little time stamp on the current situation but um it'll be interesting to look back on this in 10 years and go oh look at all those rubbish products we were look using at that, you know yeah. look at the cheap cabinet we had we didn't have the ting tools cabinet and you know look look at all of the stuff that we got but i mean this, this is a great start right this is probably version one in the new hq there'll be version two version three there'll be a new hq there'll be a lot more to come but we've got to start somewhere and i think that we've got a pretty functional setup here with a lot of tools, a lot of different things at our disposal here as well. I mean, we can pretty much tackle any project with the products that we've got in here, um, bar a few. Um, you know, there's a few, uh, you know, interior and carpet bits and pieces that we probably do need to pick up. But I mean, throw any project at us right now, I think we'd um, we'd do a pretty good job given what we've got at our disposal here now in the skill set that we're building up as well. So. Thank you for watching another video, a little bit of an odd one today, bringing you along the journey of uh, not necessarily a build of this, but just the setup of the garage at the moment. And we've got heaps more content to come, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks and, for watching. And if you're interested in getting your car detailed by um, Omni Garage, jump onto our website, yep. omnigarage.co.nz, have a look through the menu of options that we offer and you know we'll be able to put all these products onto your vehicle and um, we're happy to help you out. So check out our website for extra details on that. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.